And hello and welcome back. I'm with Janine Hansen. She's a candidate for Nevada State Senate District 19. She's with the American Independent Party and she's got a lot of strong feelings about the individual and their personal liberties. Let's talk about some of that, uh, Janine. I get my camera set up here, the one-man band. <laughs> uh, we were talking about the right to bear arms, and you were saying that that is one that's near and dear to your heart. Uh, is it actually under attack right now? Well, if anybody's listening to the news nationally, you know that the right to keep and bear arms is under attack. And it's very important that we maintain our right to keep and bear arms as a last resort against tyranny. The reason I'm running is because we want to do this through a peaceful political process. That's very important. But it's also very important that we keep the right to keep and bear arms. You know, the Nevada Constitution has one of the best statements in defense of the right to keep and bear arms. Not only is it that we have that right, but we have it for personal defense. We have it for hunting and recreation and all of those things are important but the most important thing is that we as the people maintain that liberty I've worked for over 20 years at the legislature to improve the gun laws in the state of Nevada and actually during this last session of the legislature there was a lot of improvement I have a concealed carry permit and I've been following that and there were many improvements in our opportunity to keep and bear arms that was stifled by uh, one of the legislators who was against that for years and chairman of the Assembly Judiciary Committee. But the right to keep and bear arms for all of us uh, is uh, certainly one guarantee to maintain our liberty. And I just don't think we can uh, hesitate. We have to be vigilant, vigilant in protecting the right to keep and bear arms. Now there's more improvement in the state of Nevada that can be made, and I promise if elected I will do all I can to improve and protect the right to keep and bear arms. Do you feel like uh, the biggest threat to that right is from uh, the federal level, or are there uh, strong opponents to the, the Second Amendment here in Nevada? Well, I do think the strongest threat is from the federal level, but those rights can be guaranteed by the Nevada Constitution. But just uh, last week, I went to a hearing, an interim hearing, of a committee in the state of Nevada for the legislature, and they were dis they wanted to have a discussion of what about assault rifles? Well, we have to be vigilant here because there are elements, particularly in Las Vegas, who are not in favor of the right to keep and bear arms. I don't know if you're aware, but if you're in Clark County, you have to register your firearms. This needs to be repealed uh, because it needs to be the same in all the counties in the state of Nevada, that there is absolutely no registration of our firearms. Hmm. The uh, other one that we were talking about was uh, the protecting of the natural resources here in the state of Nevada. And w when you say that, are they under assault by uh, private industry or from the government? Uh, just elaborate on that a little bit, if you wouldn't mind. Well, the biggest threat we face is really from the federal government, the BLM and the Forest Service, and their mismanagement of the land. You know, Nevada didn't come into the Union under an equal uh, doctrine like uh, New York or Pennsylvania or Missouri. None of their land is controlled by the federal government. Nevada has the highest percentage of our land controlled by the federal government. In essence, we aren't really a full state. We are a territory and 87 percent plus of our land is controlled. Now, in Lincoln County, only one percent of the land is private. I understand in Nye County, only seven percent. This limits wow. what we can do in terms of uh, our tax base so that we have enough taxes for our basic services, fire, schools, uh, police. It also limits the opportunity for expansion of the economy, for energy projects, for mines. They told me uh, in one of the counties in this district that it took over 10 years, 10 years, to get a mining operation approved. All those people could have been uh, in those counties, uh, in these rural counties, could have had jobs for 10 years except for the regulation uh, and the carry-on of the Forest Service and the BLM. This is wrong. We need to have access so that we can improve the economy in the rural communities with enterprises that can use that land. And we need to stand up against the federal government and say no. You know, now the biggest industry for the uh, 
uh, BLM and the Forest Service is fighting fires. Why is that? Because they have mismanaged the land. They used to allow the cattle to eat the grass. Uh, now that the cows can't eat the grass, we have a huge industry of firefighting. And this just sucks up the money from the private sector to the government sector and causes huge damage in the rural counties, which we're counting on. We, we need to be able to access those lands. And uh, this is a huge problem. They've shut many of the roads, the Forest Service and the BLM, and they come to the county the commissioners and they say, well, uh, we'd like to know what you think. They come and talk to the people. We'd like to know what you think about which roads should be closed. And then they completely ignore what the people in the local communities say, and they do exactly what they want and show, uh, sh shut many of these lands, which are critical to recreation, to it, the economy, to the enjoyment, to the perpetuation of our cultural values in the rural counties. This is a crime, and we've got to stand up against the feds, the BLM and the Forest Service, and tell them no. You know what uh, is interesting to me, you were saying other states like Missouri don't have the federal government owning all of the property within the boundaries of the state. And actually, when I think about that, then Nevada is actually in competition with all other states when it comes to our economy. And it sounds like our hands are tied way more than other states are as far as the federal government stepping in and saying, no, you can't do that. Or you can, but it's going to have to go through this lengthy process. Is that right? Absolutely. What we have is we didn't come in on an equal footing. And so we are in competition. This is hurting our economy. It's hurting our people. It's hurting our state. And essentially, as I said before, we're just a territory. We're not a complete state. And this is causing tremendous problems, and we need to address this. There was a wonderful hearing that recently took place up in Elko County when they had the, uh, a uh, congressional hearing on this. And what happened was the Forest Service in that hearing, the congressional hearing, actually admitted that now they are essentially blackmailing the ranchers to get their water rights. What's going to happen if the federal government gets our water rights in the state of Nevada? We already have uh, foreign companies getting control of our water. And, of course, uh, the Southern Nevada Water Authority is taking waters at, at water out of the rural counties. If we don't have water in the rural counties, we just simply won't have anything. Water means everything. Water is a simple more important than gold, more important than oil, and that's why the feds and foreign companies are very interested in taking control of our water in the rural counties. I hear that. Water in the desert. we got to protect it. Hey, uh, we're also going to touch on uh, restoring constitutional liberties, which I know is near and dear to your heart. However, we have to do one other thing first, and that is go to a commercial break, but we'll be right back with State Senate Candidate District 19, Janine Hansen. so don't go anywhere. <music> 